This episode is brought to you by the Fish Sauce RPG, Unleash the Power of Precision. Our RPG, Rod Position and Gadget, is the ultimate tool for adjusting Scotty or Fulby rod holders. No more struggles or worn out tools, just smooth, easy adjustments. Elevate your fishing game and shop the RPG now. www.fishsauce.com And now we got a huge shout out to our next sponsor, Coldwater Strong. Coldwater Strong makes high quality gear for boat and bank anglers alike, from flasher bumpers and bank fishing leader kits to kill bags and bleed bags. Coldwater Strong has the gear to make you the hot rod in the boat or on the bank. Get your Coldwater Strong products at local fishing retailers like Bob Sporting Goods in Longview, Anglers Unlimited, previously Angler West in Woodland, and Fisherman Marine and Outdoor. Go visit their website at www.coldwaterstrong.com. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back for another episode of the Wetnet Podcast. Uh, we got a fun one here for you today. Yet again, we have Cliff Salee. Remind me of your guide service. What is that? It's Real Adrenaline Guide Real Service. Real Adrenaline. Yeah. That's right. I knew it was real something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, happy to have you here, man. I uh, appreciate you coming on, and uh, and we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good time. Oh yeah, it'll, it'll be good. We yeah. did a lot of good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, first things first. Take a second. Introduce yourself. Um, tell us a little bit about kind of who you are, what you do. Um, maybe a little bit of a background. Yeah. Um, so I'm Cliff. Sal- oh. Squeaky. Yeah, squeaky. That's my shoes. It's like I'm nervous or something. Yeah. Now, uh, Don't be nervous. I'm fucking nobody. <laughs> so uh, I'm Cliff Salee. Uh, I'm the owner of Real Adrenaline Guide Service. Um, I've been in business with, with my guide service now a little over a year. Okay. Um, been Southwest, you know, Washington, born and raised. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't... Uh, I didn't have like the upbringing, like a lot of these guys, you know, that were their, their dads or, or like family members were really hardcore into fishing. Um, I've always loved fishing. Um, I started out, I had a buddy, Josh Griffin. I remember always going over to his pond and, and, uh, we'd catch crappie. Like, dude, that was my thing. Like I loved it. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, so it's like, it's, it's always been there. I've I always remember the first trip. My mom actually took me trout fishing. Oh, really? Yeah. And it, I, I have no clue where we were, but I mean, <laughs> it was, I mean, I remember catching salamanders and, you know, like trout oh, weren't yeah. biting till like right at dark, you know? Yeah. But, uh, I mean, that's, that, that was kind of my drive. And then I was always, I was the kid that, uh, you know, throwing the rocks at your buddy's window, like, dude, let's go, you know, back, <laughs> back when you could, uh, still catch, you know, those fish called, uh, um, sturgeon, you yeah. know, you remember those days? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Back in the good old days. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, but everything, everything I did was kind of, it's kind of on my own. Um, and, and then, uh, <laughs> fancy enough, did you know, fun fact, um, Camas school district, oh does not have an outdoor education program and they will kick you out oh really yeah yeah <laughs> oh, no. another fun fact is that washugal school district does not either so they <laughs> will kick you out as well yeah so that was you know that's kind of kind of it just it's always been a part of my life fishing i loved it um and then uh i kind of I, I i got into hunting pretty heavy mm-hmm. um and then i did that for gosh I got really serious into archery hunting. Did you? Yeah. Um, and that just kind of took over my life. Like September was, you know, chasing velvet bucks and, yeah. and stuff. Um, I wasn't much of an elk hunter. I don't know why. I mean, I, my buddies were obsessed with it. I just, I've always loved chasing mule deer. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you did that addicted hunting deal with Marlon and them, didn't you? Yeah. 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 We, we started that up. Um, and then it was, I feel like it was going really good, like right off the get go. It was, it was, it was fun. Um, no, remind me, that wasn't a podcast. That was just YouTube, or what was that? No, no, that was. It started out as a podcast. Okay, um, gotcha, gotcha. So this isn't anything new to you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, well, I mean, it's been it's been a minute. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that that was fun. Just kind of everybody's lives got kind of pulled in different directions, and yeah, yeah, people, as they do. Yeah. So it just it just kind of fell apart. We're actually talking about getting that moving again. Yeah, that'd I mean, be really cool. Marlon's brought it up to me multiple times. Um, but uh, I you know I I did that, and then crazy story. I got into then I got into bass fishing. Yeah. <laughs> I did a did some tournaments and all that. That was exciting for a while, but I realized I, I'm not a tournament bass fisherman, man. I, 
it's just and and i'll say it and i don't care like i'm not a prideful guy like dude the pressure would get to me oh yeah and then i'm overthinking everything yeah yeah so it just it just was not it was not my cup of tea i still like dude, i love bass fishing yeah. especially just sticking a big large mouth just yeah, I, I love that. Small mouth have a special place in my heart. Too. Yeah, I, yeah. I haven't done a lot of tournament fishing, tournament fishing like at all. Yeah. But uh, I did the uh, the Scapoo Spring Chinook Derby last year, which yeah. is like the first real kind of halfway competition based thing I'd ever done. Right. And I was all nervous going into it, and we had really super shitty conditions because I did it like April tenth or April fifteenth or something like that last year. The yeah. channel was blown to shit, <laughs> and uh, and I decided to try something a little different. And I don't want to say what it was on here. Right. Um. But we ended up taking third and rooster tails. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> not quite. Yeah. Um, but no, we ended up taking third. And That's I think, awesome. I think there were only like, like eight or nine fish entered for like a hundred and something rods or a wow. hundred and something boats. I don't remember what it was. It was a pretty big deal. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, well, shit, this is cool. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No. Um, yeah. It's exciting when you do good, but yeah, when yeah. you're not doing good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, shit, what the fuck was I going to say? We're bass fishing. We're bass fishing. Yeah. <laughs> I've never really been much of a bass guy. Um, the very first, the the first time I had ever really done any bass fish, I grew up on a dairy farm out on Savi Island, and we had these little oh my God, ditches dude, and canals. You should have had so much. And, uh, and I, had, I didn't really have anybody that fished around me, so I was doing exactly what you just said. Yep rooster tails yeah and we never got shit yeah but we got we got catfish like crazy you know just worms and whatnot and, oh yeah and uh and little dumb shit like that yeah but. bass fishing i don't know i i i really enjoyed it it's almost i, I kind of compare it to uh to what it is now for me it's it's like i mean if you were to ask me like how many spinner blades i have mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> stupid dude. Yeah. I just got. I mean, I just put in another small order. Forty-four blades showed up the other day. Oh and I'm yeah. Just like, <laughs> am I gonna use these? I don't know, but yeah. I got them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and you can't be impartial to anybody either. Yeah. I, no. I try to be impartial, but yeah. You start looking at other blade companies, and you're like, oh man, these are kind of slick. Yeah, yeah. And and there's there's some you know like what you got Hanford Reach. I love mm -hmm. Tony. He's a great guy um and then the the guys at high class they make a great blade as well you know yeah. the, the finish on it is is really well then you got short bus jt it's like so it's those are just you know uh uh takedown they make them too north mm -hmm. wild like there's some really good uh, colors yeah. and, i fell in love with i fell in love with north wild last yep. year i was using their their 3.0s in uh in drano yeah and man it was it was fun I really, for, for spring chinook yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah i really enjoyed that um so actually kind of first time that you and i had ever bumped into each other um <laughs> tried catching your boat on fire <laughs> yeah yeah so <laughs> i ran into you at a boat ramp around here and there was a gentleman that kind of flagged me down and he's like hey man um do you mind jumping me and i'm like you know i really i really would love to i try to help people whenever i can but my battery is a pain in the ass to get to yeah and uh and he's like oh i got really small hands i might be able to squeeze them in there and uh <laughs> and he screws around with it for 10 or something minutes and all of a sudden i hear you hollering over you oh, oh, oh you know yeah. just yelling and my kicker was just billowing smoke yeah and he had shorted something out somewhere and yeah. and, and i was like well you know, I think we're going to call it here. Sorry, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I remember that. And it's, it's like the worst thing because like, your boat's relatively new, too, right? Yeah, 2018. Yeah. yeah. But... So, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's a nice looking boat. So yeah. it's like, I, oh. Yeah. But, you know, it was, I felt bad because I ended up not being able to help the guy. Didn't, was it you that got a jump box from your pickup? Yeah. And, yeah. And ended up yeah. getting him. Did he, did, did you get him jumped? I think I left before I you guys came down. Uh, either, either I, th way. I think I went up and actually got it for him because yeah, that was it was just kind of a bad situation. It's like don't shut your boat <laughs> off because dude, I don't, yeah. I don't know how you're gonna get back in. Yeah, yeah, no, but, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think we talked one more time in an addicted bash or something like that. But oh, I'm sure we did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I know, uh, I know, I thought you were a pretty cool dude, and uh, and I've been kind of hoping to get you on the podcast for a little bit. So appreciate I'm it. Glad that you're here. Um, for a second, we'll kind of jump into the stuff that I normally do here. Um, first things first, I'm going to do some dam count stuff. Um, we've actually had some fish going over the dam, which yeah. is which is looking promising. Um, we we got a total of 26 over Willamette Falls now, which is 
stellar. Yeah. Guys are getting them in there. Yeah. Um, turbidity in the channel, or I guess in the main stem will aim it right now is sitting steady at a four. Um, so plenty, plenty of clarity. Don't be afraid to go troll around in there. Guys are getting them. Yeah. I've seen a lot of posts mm -hmm. where I just, man, I, <laughs> we itching? had this conversation, man, <laughs> this, this lower river, man, it's a cruise for you. But... Oh yeah. Yeah. But you know, some guys figure it out. Oh, oh yeah. There's some great fishermen down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Bonneville Dam, they actually haven't updated their counts in uh, in a couple days, but uh, as of the 23rd, we got 31 over Bonneville Dam. Nothing nothing any further than that, but there's fish in the system. Don't be afraid to go chase them. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, another thing we got to get into is some of our giveaways that we have going on. I went back and I actually watched episode eight myself, and I realized I was not clear at all on how you get <laughs> yourself entered to win. I was like, hey, win this shit. Yeah. Uh, you got to figure it you out. Get yourself. excited, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So what you got to do to win that cold water strong gear is uh, you have to go to our Facebook page, the Wet Net Weekend Report, and you have to like the page or follow the page. For some reason, I don't know how Facebook works. Mine only gives me one option. So either like yeah, it or it's like follow. Like it. or follow. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, I don't get how that works. Do one or the other. We'll be able to see it. Um, comment on the post for episode eight. Tag three friends in that comment, and then share that post and then go to cold water strong and like, or follow their Facebook page. That's how you get yourself entered to win. Um, and once we start to get a handful of people entered, then we'll go ahead and, uh, Dude, and announce those winners. It's hard to put a date on it because our following isn't quite all that big. So it'll, I'd love to, I'd love there, to, man. I'd love to say we're going to get it. You know, we're going to, we're going to do the giveaway this date. Yeah. But if I would have done that three weeks ago, I would have had one person to give it away to. <laughs> and then that guy would have made out like a bandit. <laughs> so I, I, okay, I got it. I need, I know what I need to do. Yeah. 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 So now that I got that cleared up and out of the way, um, what, what have you been up to, man? What have you been doing? Um, like right now, um, I'm, I'm in, I'm still all kokanee fish till mid April. Okay. Um, mostly it's consistent. It's, it's nice cause it's kokanee fishing is it's, um, you know, for, for me, it, it's really cool to see, like, it's like, I get my, my family out there my daughter, she loves it. Mm -hmm. Um, but to be able to get other families out there, I got a, um, custom top that i had uh, oh gosh what's the top shop uh superior superior just yeah, right they, right down the way over yeah, here yeah man he amazing job on my top mm. and it's it's fully enclosed so it's like yeah yeah i, I got one of those sitting right over there yeah yeah <laughs> i didn't get the boot i wish i did yeah yeah um but Anyways, it's yeah. the you know to, to, to be able to get families out there um you can have kids i got a, a super high output heater in there so it's literally like having a fireplace in there oh, yeah. um so that wives don't get cold so there's like i try to take down every barrier that somebody would have to be like oh well i can't go fishing in the yeah winter. and pe people just want to be comfortable you yeah. know so oh, people yeah. don't like being wet people don't like being cold yeah. people don't like being hungry yeah you know so you get those bases covered you're good to go yeah and coconut are fun you yeah know, i think i'm on like my third or fourth trip of doing it now and we're improving every trip that's good but you know, I, I just got myself some downriggers. I got a kill of a deal on them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're a downrigger guy. Are you a flatline guy, downrigger um, guy? Right now, I won't run downriggers till probably, if I go, July and August. Oh, okay. Like, and then I'm obviously, like, then it'll be the beginning of August. Unless I had a trip that, that got botched last year just because the wind came up. Mm -hmm. and And I had, you know... When you're splashing water over the bow, man. People oh, don't appreciate rough. that. So <laughs> it's like I called them up and I said, "Hey, you guys want to go kokanee fishing?" Mm -hmm. you know? And they're like, "Okay, well, whatever." Yeah. And they went. We killed sixty fish. You oh, know. Geez. And I mean, so it's like, yeah. And I had I had a trip that morning, and then I had a trip that evening. Yeah. yeah. Killed a hundred fish that day. Oh, geez. For so, how many takedowns, roughly? Um, y you know what I I found is it's, I it seems like the fish that are deeper, mm -hmm. um. And maybe it is just that time of year, but I've even noticed it this year. Is the fish that seem to be deeper seem to be more aggressive. Okay. Um, I don't know if it has to do with, you know, when the fish are up on the surface and you're flatlining, you're out, you know, anywhere 100, 150. Mm -hmm. if you forget you got a to, lot of line to cover. Yeah, if you forget to click the bail, like you could be out 225 <laughs> feet, you know. Um, yeah. And it takes it takes a long time. Yeah. And and what I tell my clients too is it's like you need to understand like there's a cadence and you, and you have to stick with that, like the one 1,000. And when that fish is thrashing, you got to give it a little bit of grace. Like mm -hmm. you can't, the boat's already moving at, you know, 
anywhere 0.9 to 1.2. That's my sweet spot. That's where I stay. Right. Um, and so like that's constant pull Mm -hmm. against it, you know? And, and then when you're adding more tension to it, it's like, you know, everybody that doesn't know, like Coke and you have soft mouths. Like you can tear a hook out of them. I mean, they'll tear their eyeballs out. Like it's been multiple <laughs> times where they've hit so hard. Yeah, we had that happen twice on. You just Sunday. bring an eyeball in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Swimming twice. in circles, man. That's what they're doing now. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, I uh, just trying to figure out these downriggers. We actually tried playing with them a little bit mm-hmm. on Sunday just to get a feel for using them. Yeah, and uh, and I mean, we found them like 15 foot on the on the yeah. depth liner or and on the downriggers. So yeah, I mean they're they're down there a little bit. But they're not like, you don't need the downriggers yet. You know, yeah. we were getting yeah. them like 70, 75 with, or 75 foot back yeah. with one ounce of lead. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, right right now, it's, it's especially right now, actually. Um, when the, because we had that, um, we had that like winter cold snap and we had all that snow and then it all melted off like boom. Yeah. Made it great for winter steelhead but sucked when it came to kokanee because the clarity man these fish Mm -hmm. like it's all sight if you got only three i don't care like three feet four feet of clarity it's not enough right like these fish they need to be able to see from a distance if you're not running over the top of them Mm -hmm. so once it cleared up it also cleared up and then it warmed up so it's like we had this perfect combination of things work out yeah so it's like now it's i mean i'm i'm running like my my bow rods, I'm running four ounces of lead on. Oh really? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's like don't use your electronics. You know, it's like I always tell people use your electronics and don't be afraid to move. No. Like you know, there's there's been some people that oh there's squawfish that are down there. Like, <laughs> okay. Well, here's the deal. If you're trolling, yeah. say for you know two hours, mm-hmm. and if those are still squawfish at that point, yeah. You know, like maybe dip into them and find out if it's yeah, actually yeah. squawfish. What do you have to lose? You're going to catch a fish? Yeah. Like, who yeah. cares? Like, at that point, feed an eagle, right? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Who cares? Well, especially especially if you're running, you know, four or six rods or something like that, yeah. drop one down there, you know? Yeah, exactly. Don't be afraid to, you know, find them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of guilty of it because I'm only, you know, four or something trips in. Um, I like to start trolling at the ramp, mm-hmm. and I'll just troll. Yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't run. I haven't even been to the dam yet. I, I think I went to the waterfall. But I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I just kind of try to find boats and yeah. fit in with them. Well, and, and, and that's that's a big thing, too. But, I mean, um, you know, if you see nets flying, obviously there's fish in the area. Right. You know, and, and typically, like, on that body of water, I mean, even, even Yale, I mean, it's all the same. Like, everybody's doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, just there's some, there's some people that, I mean, it, it's tough when you go, because I, I only do this part-time. Right. You know, so it's not a full-time gig for me. So it's like if I'm off the water for like two weeks. Oh, oh the guiding is only yeah. part? Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I do like, you know, it's, it's a Friday through Sunday thing for gotcha. me. Gotcha. Um, if you don't mind me asking, what's your, what's your full-time? Oh, what's your nine to five? <laughs> construction, unfortunately. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. For so, who? Um, it's it's uh, CPAC Engineering. They're out of L.A., Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, but it's, it's, I do, it's all on, it's all government stuff. So gotcha. it's like the, the fortunate thing is I get to see where the government blows a bunch of our like taxpayer <laughs> dollars, but I get to see it come full circle. Like yeah. they at least get to pay me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I worked in construction for a little bit. I was a, I mean, I was a truck driver, but I was doing low boy, low boy yep. moving equipment and stuff. So, um, ne- definitely not a stranger to that. Yeah. So yeah. anyways, you were saying this is a part-time gig. So yeah. So it's part-time. So it's like when I'm not on the water, um, you know, it, it can change. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say drastically, but it's like, once you find fish, I mean, it, they're, they're typically in the same area for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, once, once it does start warming up, I feel like they, they do change. Cause I was catching fish in areas like I've never caught fish before. Like right. in, in August, I'm like, I just went out there, gave it a shot, look for a big school. Boom. There they are. Drop into them, see what happens. Yeah. You know, but, um, the biggest don't don't be afraid to move like i i feel like people get stuck you know it's a, you got these certain trolls that people do and, and waterfall being like it can be good mm-hmm. like don't get me wrong but man if you don't see nets flying yeah don't be afraid to bounce around like it's and, and you know like because with you being relatively new to it mm-hmm. you know it's like it is there's there's going to be like a discovery period of where you're like you're going to land on fish one day you're going to end up just every you'll all get limits right you know, and keep that in the back of your mind, you know, it's like, they may not be there next week. Yeah. 
but they could be there possibly the next. Well, and it seems like they move like even within you know an hour because yeah. when when we when we started, um, you come out of you come out of Speely, there's that first point. Yep. I don't know what that's spots called anyways i started trolling right there yeah working my way towards the waterfall and we landed on them. i mean for myself my lady and my two kids i mean we got like we got nine in a matter of like 15 minutes and i was like oh shit yeah. you know this yeah. is cool this isn't what i'm used to yeah and we ended up have we ended up killing like 13 and three and a half hours so right. it's like i lost them and i didn't even know where to where to look to find them did you circle back on them i tried to yeah. i tried to yeah, yeah. i just because i i'm not really confident in making the turns with a hundred and something foot of line out it's a long you know there's times where it's like i'd rather just be like everybody reel in yeah that's exactly what we did because it's way faster yeah but here's the thing is what you're going to learn on on your turns mm -hmm. net i talked to cameron black about this and he's like oh i don't do it i just speed up slow down mm -hmm. which okay that, that's one thing you know so that's that's his way mm -hmm. i have like for me i like zigzag oh, because okay. the thing is, is is what's going on especially if you're getting fish that are trailing like mm -hmm. on your long lines you can't see them um i got i have live scope so it's like all my bow rods when i'm running four ounces you lucky bastard right <laughs> i want live scope so bad. i can i can watch my rods running right through these fish mm -hmm. you know so it makes it it makes it fun it's like a video game before the words can come out you're like bam you yeah know, rod gets buried yeah. buried from a kokanee but yeah, yeah. um they, they they're feisty little bastards dude on ultralight rods like yeah. that's yeah it was funny because pow like brandon power is like i love that dude you know he was out there the same day i mean i was i was killing him he's like you know i really wish i could care that much about kokanee <laughs> <I'm like, laughs> yeah I'm, all right i get it yeah but yeah. it's it's it is it's you know going back to like why why I do it too it's like a, like I said getting the families and stuff out there that just don't generally have the opportunity you know yeah. it's it, it's fun for them I love having the kids out there because at the end of the day and I know a lot of people say it that's the future of this sport yeah absolutely like in in anything and I mean I would have dude I'd have been like beyond the moon like it, being a six seven year old kid and having my parents take me on a guided trip yeah like, oh god yeah oh dude i'd have been the, like and i've had them you know the kids that are under you know hand and foot the whole time they want to know everything and it's like <laughs> you, for us like you kind of fall out of like the the the, the fall fishing and, and your springer fishing and you know salmon fishing stuff to where it's like you're a little more serious yeah um so you fall out of that and you know it's like you're you're more patient and it's like okay this is what's going on well that's that's exactly that's exactly kind of what's drawn me to it so far is um because yeah. i've i've always just done you know salmon steelhead you know sturgeon yeah. when it's open yeah. um and that's what my kids have known for the first handful of years of their life and i I got the opportunity to start doing this a little bit and I was like, man, this is nice. Yeah. You know, like it's, I'm fishing almost the same way, you know, just trolling around right. and it's way less stressful. You know, we had a quad and I was yeah. just like, not even stressed. I was like, yeah. oh shit, there's one. And we'll yeah. leave him for a minute. And he ended up popping off and yeah. it's, it's a fucking kokanee. That's a, that's exactly it. Yeah. Like, yeah. But like if we would have got a quad or, you know, a double, with myself and my lady and my kids, yeah. salmon fishing. Oh my oh god, my god. chaos! Oh, would have broke yeah. loose. Yeah. Oh hell, would have broke loose. <laughs> yeah. So it's just you know it, it, it's it's fun and you can get into them and it's yeah. relaxing. And that's that's exactly it. that's it's one of the things. It's it's the easiest fishing that I do all year. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like you bow mount trolling motor, yeah. set it in a direction. You play with a remote. You know, like I say, making sure like for me, like I say, zigzagging. So it's, it's, you're changing up your presentation, right. you know, it's, yeah. it's, so it's, you get, you get your long lines that's, that are like straight out the back and then you have your other rods, you know, that your side rods, bow rods, they're going to change the speed. One's going to fall, one's going to pull away, mm -hmm. you know? So if it's, if that fish, um, and I mean, the same thing goes with salmon too. I feel like if you're pulling it away from them and they feel like something's getting away, they'll attack it yeah. or, mm -hmm. or do you get the ones that are like trailing up on it? And then you slow that down, it drops in their face, oh, then yeah. they whack it. So it's like trolling in a straight line. I feel like that's, that's, that's a, not it. yeah, it's a huge disadvantage. Cause first off, when you're sweeping your lines across the water, yeah. you know, changing that direction, like unless you're going straight over them or those fish are, you know, like just so happen to be schooling past. Yeah. Like, I don't feel like you're covering the water more like efficiently enough and and i feel like for me like that's that's a huge help and the second one is people's speed you know it's i you hear a lot of people 1.2 to 1.4 yeah no dude you're too fast yeah yeah i'm 
I, I like I like the point nine to one point two. And then there's times like if I want to try to pull away, like I'll speed up a little bit, but then I immediately slow down. Yeah. There's times I'll just kill the motor and drop it back, you know. So there's there's just a lot of different tactics that I don't think people are are utilizing because if you if you don't know, you know, like prime example, you like you go out, you're like, okay, this is this is what I do for salmon. Yeah. Yeah. Is it different? Uh, I don't know. To me, it's like I've I've taken what I've learned there and kind of utilized it into my salmon fishing. So right. That's, yeah, that makes sense. You know, I I with kokanee fishing, I'm actually the complete opposite that I am from salmon fishing. Relaxed. <laughs> well, yes, relaxed. But also, like when I'm salmon fishing and I'm not catching fish. Yeah. The first thing I start looking at is um, like my actions and mm-hmm. presentations, you yep. know, so like, you know, shortening my bumper on my 360 or lengthening my leader, like my brain goes to action. A yeah. lot of guys will change spinner blades. They'll change flashers. I yep. look at action first. With kokanee fishing, I, I started just fucking with colors. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go from pinks to oranges to greens to yellows mm-hmm. and um, and different Dodgers. I was running Arrow Flash. I was running Brad's. I was running yep. Simon's. And you know, I never even considered zigzagging on them or yeah. you know anything like that because i was marking them i just couldn't get them to go yeah and so it's just being able to being able to hear things from somebody that does it yeah you know pretty fucking successfully i, it, I uh, do all right <laughs> it, uh, yeah. it, it just kind of opens some doors i've you know? had like i've had some i've had some teachers along the way i've just mm-hmm. i've taken what they've taught me and i feel like i've i've changed it to where it it fits me and in in the way i like to fish whether it was by accident or not you know it's you know it's like just don't be afraid to try something that's why i say don't be afraid to to move don't be afraid to you know speed up slow down um you know if if you're not seeing those nets flying going back to that like just get out of there like you you don't have anything to lose at that point because nobody's catching anything but one thing with kokanee is they'll shut off Mm -hmm. i mean you could be going through like we had the other day we had like 48 fish and and i was like okay we'll get 50 and we'll be done by noon not a problem yeah dude two hours later still fighting for those last two yeah oh, man. And i'm like you guys ready to go and clean fish because like because <laughs> the problem is like i'll grind like i'll i'll keep going yeah. you know and some people are like hey uh how long do these trips generally run? <laughs> you yeah. know, but it's like, it's, like I say, I do it part time. So I have that advantage, right? you know, to where it's, 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 I enjoy it. It's not, it's not my, my paycheck and the guys right. that do it full time, man, I got respect for them Yeah, because yeah. not only are they, they super fishy, but like, dude, you gotta, you, gotta, you have to be elite. Yeah. You, you, you gotta, you gotta be like a different kind of dude yeah you know like brandon be, powers <laughs> brandon powers yeah. that's right um uh, yeah you, you got to be able to withstand some shit i mean you're on a boat yeah. and if you, you you spent a lot of time on a boat it can fucking wear you down oh yeah and when you have to do it to make your paycheck for you know rain or shine man imagine spending a month at buoy 10 yeah. you know I couldn't do it. I, I no. did it. I took a week off of work this last season yeah. and did it. And I was like, I don't even want to look at buoy 10. Yeah. Especially like down there. Cause like when you got these huge tides playing the roles and oh, everything, you yeah. already know going into it, like what kind of day you're going to have. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, but the guys that, like I say, that are elite. Yeah. And I mean, I know a lot of them and they get them, yeah. but it's like years and years and years of learning and all that. And I mean, I just, I have, like the utmost respect for him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So and I know I, I had this conversation with, uh, oh man, I don't remember who it was. It might have been Chase. I think it was Chase. Um, the guides are the biggest advocates for what we do, yeah. you know, um, and protecting our fisheries. Like if we didn't have guides, you would have a bunch of random nut sacks owning boats, trying to go fishing, yep. and we would be screwed, you know. Yeah. So it, it's it's these guys' livelihoods, and it's what they have to do. To, to protect our fisheries because that's their paycheck, mm-hmm. you know, and also it's what they love to do, you know, yeah, for the most part. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's days where they're like, man, I wish I was not doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Know? I mean, I, I drive log truck for a living and I know damn well, I wake up in the morning some days and I'm like, do I really need this job? <laughs> you know, I'm sure, I'm sure there's plenty of guys that, that right. have that same, have that same feeling. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely a grind for them. And I mean, that's, that's why it's like, for me, it's, I, I, I just have fun with it. Yeah. And then that's, that's, 
what I, I try to keep it fun. I try to keep it light. Like mm-hmm. I don't, I don't try to take anything too serious. Yeah. Well, and it makes it more fun for the clients too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen, I've, I've seen some guides on the water that are just, you can see their facial expression just mm-hmm. pissed. And I'm like, I don't <clears throat> see how their clients are having fun with that. You know, it, um, it's just, it, it's almost hard to watch sometimes. Yeah. That's yeah. And I've said that as like, on a bad day of fishing, man, you better have a joke book in your back pocket because yeah. dude, they, these people, they ain't going to want to come back, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's, I, you know, I guess the biggest reason, like I, I got into guiding is I was actually fishing with, um, Stephen Hammond Mm -hmm. and, uh, we, we had this gentleman, um, his name was Jerry Richardson. He was a real decorated firefighter, Mm -hmm. had like six or seven oxygen bottles, um, on the boat, had mesothelioma. Um, and like, I was there, you know, when, when he hooked his last, salmon oh geez yeah and and he wasn't he wasn't strong enough to reel it in Mm -hmm. and i'm sitting there and i'm listening to um him and his buddy like they're they're telling these stories and this dude this dude was a badass like they did all these backcountry hunts and everything like all these fishing trips and i like to see somebody in that state and i was like yeah hearing stories of of kind of who they used to be versus looking at you know i yeah i can't imagine yeah and and it just like, dude, it just like hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. And it's, and that's kind of like my, my mission statement of what I do is it's like, whether it's your first, last or 10,000th, like that's, you know, for me, I tell people, I was like, it's, it's selfish of me yeah, because yeah. I get that and nobody, yeah. nobody can take that away from me. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I get their first, their last, their 10,000th. Yeah. And the thing is, is it's, it's my goal to make sure that it's their best day they've ever had on the water. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because it's like everybody deserves that, yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm able to, like I said, I'm able to do that. I, we just talked about some of those guys that are riding <laughs> around, you know, with these smug looks and it's like, dude, you're miserable. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But again, it's like, do you know what kind of day they've had or, you know, who knows? Like boat, dude, you own a boat. Yeah. You're going to be pissed off at some point in time. Let's oh, be honest. Oh, I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> I've seen it. When my boat <laughs> damn near caught fire. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tried really hard to not be pissed, but yeah. I was like, dude, come the fuck on. Yeah. You know. Just trying to hold it together because it's yeah. like you're trying to do a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. that I got my kids sitting there and yep. my lady and I don't need them seeing me hulk out. You yeah. Know? But, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Con- con- controlling that and containing anger, man. Just. Oof. Yeah, but, it can be tough sometimes. You know, I, I I've heard I've heard through the grapevine. You know, sometimes um, sometimes part time guides seem like they get a little bit different of a rap than the full time guys in terms of like um, I've I've heard I'm trying to figure out the best way to say this. I've heard that part time guides kind of uh, piss people off in a sense because you oh, yeah. are you're essentially taking clientele from full time guys and. Um, Basically, what I'm trying to say is like there's different reasons that people do this. You sure. know, what, what, the majority of full time guides that do it, they do it because it's their job. Right, right. A part time guide like yourself, or yep. you know, a hundred other part time guides that are out there, they're doing it because it's what they love and it's what they enjoy to do. Mm-hmm. And if you have the means to do it, why not do it and right. provide a different kind of experience sure. versus something that a full time guide would do? You know. Yeah, and and I mean to to, to kind of speak to that, it's like I mean. <laughs> I've, I've heard it, you know, and it's, and that's okay. Like, you know, cause this is what I tell them too. Yeah. You only have so many days on your calendar, bud. Yeah, exactly. So when your book was six people and I got three. Yeah. What are you sweating? Yeah, exactly. Cause they wanted to fish today, not tomorrow. Right. You know, and it's, and I'm one of those guys too. It's like, you know, I got some buddies, um, you know, uh, Jason Harmson, uh, Steel Obsession Guide Service, mm-hmm. super good dude. Yeah, I talked to him at the Addicted Bash too. Yeah, yeah, super good dude, super chill. Like I love fishing with that guy. Um, you know, I'll kick him people. Mm-hmm. Like if I get if people get a hold of me, I mean, there's been times like uh, uh, Blair Johnson, BGS Northwest. Like mm-hmm. I've had people contact me. I'll throw them there. Like that's that's the thing is is here's the thing is. I'm not in this to make money. Right. And that's what people don't understand. If you chase, and I don't care what business it is. This is not my first business that I've owned. Right. If you chase the dollar, I don't care. No. You will never make it. No. You just won't. Because if you're so focused on money and not the experience, Mm -hmm. people will fail. And they fail every single time. That's why it's like, we'll see we'll see where you're at in five years part-time guide yeah you know what i mean like if you're still around like okay you've made it yeah 
it, most of them don't, you know, it's like they, they do, you know, you, I could, they could say the same thing about me and I'm fine with that. Right. But I'm also, I'm all about proving people wrong. That's yeah. what I do. Um, and, and I mean, I, I am that guy. I got the boat. I got all the stuff. Yeah. Like I'm starting a business again. Yeah. You get some people that are pissed off at you, but guess what? That's just part of the business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just like when you start up an Arco station right across from a Chevron. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's the, the market. Is it saturated? Yeah. But you know what? There's always more people. Guess what? You know how many people move from California to here every day? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nothing wrong with California, except yeah. you jacked up our home prices. <laughs> but hey, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You got some guys that <laughs> fucking stuck renting like me. Yeah. You know, I love to own a house, you bastards. <laughs> yeah. But no. But here we are. You know, but it's, it is, it's, and, and that's fine. But it's, I, I want to be, you know, the, the whole thing with the guiding. Um, fishing and all that. It's like, I, I'm not doing it just for me. Yeah. It's, I, I want to, I want to help out my buddies, you mm-hmm. know? And, and, um, you know, I've, I've got some, some flack from some people, um, you know, being affiliated with, with Marlin and addicted and everybody that goes with it. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you right now, if you don't like Marlin, he's one of those guys, you, you do, you either, you either love him or you don't. Yeah. But if you actually knew the guy, yeah. He's a great dude. Well, and I feel like I feel like a lot of the hate that goes that goes towards addicted is, and I, I I'm throwing everybody kind. Of, I'm not gonna say everybody. I'm throwing people into a stereotype here. A lot sure. of guys that hate addicted are pissed off old dudes. That guys salty. are salty. Yeah. yeah. So yes, pissed off old dudes that yeah. guys are um, making a living out of you know not necessarily guiding, but like I mean obviously you have guides. You have Cameron and Nick mm-hmm. and yourself, and but. Um, and they're sharing this stuff, dude. Yeah, and they're yeah, full time yeah. guides. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it's like, you, are you going to be competition on the water? Maybe, maybe not. But no. you know, Cameron's going to get his. You know, but Nick's going to get his. You're not taking fish from these dudes. No, you're not. And that's that's what I've said too. Is like, and again, I'm nobody in this industry. Is what I always say. Yeah. Is is you know, it's I oversharing and 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 all that. But here's the thing, I could give you all my equipment. Mm-hmm. I could give you my boat. I could tell you where to go. And what to do, I will still outfish you. Yeah. It's a confidence thing. Yeah. Like, dude, these these guys, like, <laughs> it's crazy the amount of confidence they have. Like, yeah. it's, they're just good, man. Yeah. And like, that's one thing, like, Marlon always told me, too. He's like, never, ever pay attention to what Cameron's doing <laughs> or what Nick is doing. Yeah. Because it will drive you mad, oh, you know? Yeah. So it's. But it's, it's like, like the, they're just great guys. Like, so it's like, I've, I've, you know, I've gotten some flack from some people and that's fine. Yeah. You know, that's fine. Like, dude, it's, it's not for everybody. Yeah. And that's, that's fine. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be. What they advocate for the sport and mm-hmm. what they do, this is also what I say, is there's probably a lot of people don't know and understand or know what the Pittman-Robertson Act is. I've actually never heard of it. So it's a tax that's put on all sporting goods, right? Okay. All hunting and fishing. There's a tax and it goes towards conservation. Okay. Okay. So... Every piece of like you, you go out and you buy hooks or or line or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. There's that tax that's put on it, so that's going towards conservation. Gotcha. The guys that are old and salty about that, all they do is take. Yeah. They give nothing back. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's and you know what? I'm sure I'm going to get hate for that, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. Because if you can tell me what you've done. Yeah. That's fine. Well, and then and then you also you look at what addicted has brought for the fishing community. How many kids? Oh my God, how dude, many kids amazing. has addicted gotten into fishing yeah. that you don't know where they would have been otherwise? It's like yeah. Marlin's whole story exactly. with addicted. You know, yep. like you, you you'll never be able to fathom how many how many lives have been changed just from yeah. having a platform like addicted. You know, mm-hmm. and you know, like like we've talked about, addicted gets a lot of hate. I have an addicted addicted sticker on my boat, and yeah. I'll, I will. You know, yeah. some guys hate them. I don't. Yeah, I go to the bashes. I go to you know, I I watch their YouTube videos. I try to support when I can, and yeah, you know, it's it's it is what it is. You know, I want my kids to grow up knowing what addicted is yeah. and who they are, and because they deserve it. You yeah. know, and I mean everybody deserves. This is what I've said too. Is you know, it's, it goes back to the, the well, they share too much, and there's too much information that's given mm-hmm. out. Well, here's the thing: is it's a public resource at mm-hmm. the end of the day. Right. If somebody went out and they purchased a fishing license. They purchase the right to catch the same fish that you catch. Right. So it's like to say that they don't deserve that just because, you know, a prime example, like everything, like I said, that I've learned, mm. I was fortunate that I had people to, to, um, 
to teach me some of it, you know, and get me a, a good, a good background in it. And then I've just taken it from there. Yeah. Um, again, I'm not, I'm, I'm super humble with it. I'm not going to say I'm the greatest person, like the greatest fisherman in the world, but I promise you, yeah. if your ass is on my boat, you're going to have an amazing day, whether yeah. we catch fish or not, dude, we're going to have a good time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I got that. I got that impression. You, uh, you did an addicted, uh, an addicted life last year at yeah. the mouth of the Kellets. Yeah. Looked like a fucking blast. Even for the first, what was it? Two hours or whatever that <laughs> you guys didn't get bit. Yeah. What, yeah. okay. What, what's the pressure like on that? You get Marlin or somebody who approaches you says, Hey, let's do an addicted life on your boat and you go two hours without a fish is that kind of like oh, shit well i mean th- had i not like smashed them the day before yeah. <laughs> you know like and and kind of knowing that like where it was in the tide when i was doing it and you know we're next day right you know yeah. so it's gonna be a little bit different yeah. you just gotta wait for that tide and uh having like <laughs> it was funny because I was actually thinking about that. You know, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna pretend for a second that I wasn't like, shit. We're gonna have a. I, I actually asked Sean this question when he was filming. I was like, hey, dude, what do you think of this? You know, you guys are gonna be filming sunrises and sunsets and <laughs> just a rod bobbing up and down, dude. So yeah. you know, if you guys get good video of everybody else catching fish around us, that's great. Yeah. You know, but it's you know again, I'm fortunate because it's. You know, it, I, I think if it was anybody else, I, I would probably be more nervous. Yeah. But it's like I've I've known Marlon, you know, so it's like we've been friends for years. So it's like I don't it it didn't it didn't have too much of an effect. But it like you start thinking like, well, this is gonna be a lame ass <laughs> video. I was like, I hope you guys have some backup content. Yeah, you know, yeah, no kidding. But it it turned out really good. Yeah. But it was fun to watch. It was yeah. fun. My favorite was that takedown that in the front where I buried it. Oh my god, dude, that <laughs> fish. So that that fish took off and when scott grabbed the rod like he's just yelling out numbers of like where it's going and it runs over and it actually gets into uh fitro's boat oh yeah and gets tangled up in his stuff and how he got that undone i have no clue but thanks jake um (laughs) thank you yeah yeah and then and then we thought we'd lost it and you know then it was just it was just hauling ass up river yeah and we catch back up with it and it was it was headed right for another boat so i'm surprised we didn't get tangled up in that i mean it was just it was also one of those days where i mean i'm i'm guilty like i was running i was running um i was still running fluorocarbon which yeah man fluorocarbon <laughs> for fall fish is a joke dude i broke <laughs> off so many fish oh yeah so uh needless to say switching switching to uh to monofilament big big game changer but yeah but yeah i know it was it was a blast like we had a good time you know it's like when you're around people and like even even out there is crazy as it gets yeah and people are catching that's fish. worse than drano uh, guy, Dude, guys guys can guys complain about drano uh, at least there's like it's it's a racetrack at it's drano. structure yeah it's structure there is no structure out there do no, i watched this one yeah. guy got t-boned oh jeez. he was floating down with the fish another boat was going upstream yeah and I mean, just straight deep. Not a word was said between the two boats. Oh, man. The one boat just took off. That was it. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. And they were, dude, they were nice boats, too. Yeah. You know, and I just, I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. That's, but that's why I, gen- I don't go inside. Yeah. I do not like that inside stuff. Um, I'm not, for some reason, I like Drano, though, the chaos of Drano. Oh, I like, love it, man. Yeah. I love it. Absolutely love it. Guys are like, man, I can't do that. I yeah. can't do the toilet bowl, dude. I'm yeah. about it. But yeah. then again, like the majority of the guys in Drano, it's a big fucking party. You know, everybody's having a blast. You're yeah. going to get two or three assholes that you got to deal yeah. with throughout the course of a day. Yeah. Everybody else is having a blast. Yeah. I've seen dudes netting other, you know, netting fish for dudes, you know, yeah. like oh yeah you see that video what was that last year the dude that jumped off of the boat i was there you were there <laughs> i was there when it happened and i'm like that would have been the coolest fucking thing to see i am watching this and like i remember because the guy hooked up and 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 i just hear this one guy um they were like your other rod you know but this guy had already caught his his first fish yeah yeah and he was hooked up with his second then his uh, his other rod goes off yeah and uh he's like he's like hey if I come over there, can I not swim? Yeah. If I come over there, can I reel it in? Yeah. Like, yeah. So I see this dude like ripping stuff out of his pockets. I'm like, I'm telling my stepdad, I'm like, no way. <laughs> Cause dude, the water's still like 50 some odd degrees. Like, oh, yeah, and if you warm. never jumped into 50 some odd degree water, it will take your breath away. Yeah. Not him. He was yeah. full of antifreeze. Yeah. I'm kind of a giant pussy. Like even, <sighs> even swimming in the Columbia when it's like 70 degrees, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I couldn't imagine. I mean, I guess you get the adrenaline, you know, maybe. Yeah. yeah I don't know. But that, that was crazy. He swam over. Yeah. 
grabbed yeah. the other rod, netted that dude's fish, and reeled his t- that other fish in yeah. and landed it. I'm like, this is like only here like yeah. only here like the place of total chaos that that could happen yeah Man, but yeah it. no it's I, I i love it dude and that's that's the biggest thing is it's i don't know what it is man it's like that 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 chaos fishing like it's an adrenaline rush for me yeah you know? yeah and and a lot of time it's it's funny because you hear you hear a lot of people are like oh yeah you, could, you probably have fish all the time yeah no <laughs> <laughs> i don't I don't get to fish, you yeah. know, but yeah. it's, it is one thing like that, that, that is, that I do love about this, this job, I mean, call it a job. It's not a job for me. It's, it's fun. Um, and it's an experience, but it's like when you're, when you're fishing multiple rods, mm. I'm fishing all of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, like do, you just have to be like, whoever it is, is responsible for reeling it in. If you mm. mess that up, well, that's on you, bud, Yeah, <laughs> you know, and 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 that's that's i don't know man it's just figuring it out and i i've i've gotten more to that part and and even going back to to like Stephen Hammond and i didn't understand this like when when i was younger and i'd fished with him yeah is he always just loved running the boat and i didn't understand it i'm like dude that's stupid i was like i want to reel and fish yeah but now like i i get it yeah. like it's it's almost like you're the mad scientist that whipped all this crap together oh, and you're yeah. like dude, I made that work. Yeah. yeah. You know, know, I'm I'm no, I'm no guide. You know, I have an 18 foot fucking fish, right? You Mm -hmm. know, I can fish five people, including myself. And it is tight. You know, I've done, I've done four and myself and it is snug. Yeah. But I get, I get exactly what you're saying. Like it's gotten to a point now where like, and I, I I haven't caught obviously as many fish as some people, but I've caught Mm -hmm. some fish. I don't even like fighting fish anymore. Like yeah. some dudes are like, "Oh, Clay, you, you get this one." I'm like, "Fuck it, dude. Yeah. Just stay away from it." You know, like I'm gonna stay away from it. Grab it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I totally get. I totally get what you're saying about putting people on fish because it's like you're doing something right. You know, and yeah. it's that's part of what I love about springer fishing mm-hmm. with herring. That's <sighs> part of what I love about. I just did up my own uh, coon shrimp. You know, it's mm-hmm. like you do little things to make you feel even better about what you're doing. Right. It's like I'm catching fish on shit that I did. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, I love Bill. Bill Revis. Yeah. Um, makes a millennial great, bait. Yep, great makes product. A good. Mm-hmm. Good shrimp. But it's cool when you do shit yourself too. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And uh, I know I went and bought 35 pounds. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bought I bought 10 yeah. and I think I've got about 5 left, but yeah. I'm I'm experimenting with the shrimp a little bit this year. Um, cuz I I did I did a batch last year and it was garbage. But I overcomplicated the fuck out of it. I watched like 100 YouTube videos yeah. and I did a hundred different recipes into one yeah. instead of just picking one. I mean, literally my recipe this year is rock salt, mm-hmm. sugar, cure powder. Mm-hmm. And I did, I did anise in every jar. I like anise, love yeah. anise, but I like subtle anise. You know, yeah. some guys, anise it's super strong. Yeah. 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 But Keith you know, Archer changed the game for a lot of, like, I, I bet you there's more I got people. Six jars of it sitting over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> there's more people probably this year that will cure their own coon shrimp due to that dude right there but i mean he's fishy man like yeah he, yeah <laughs> i was not uh, a guy that's blowing smoke yeah i was hover fishing i was hover fishing um the mouth of the lewis last year mm-hmm. next to him oh, and that's he exciting. was fucking yeah. fish up and that was before i even knew who he was yeah the only reason that i figured out that's who it was is because i had seen his videos start coming out and i put two and two together yeah. and i talked to him and that's like, the thing that about that dude that's the thing about keith is keith is cool as fuck yeah i've had like two or three separate occasions i've talked with him on the phone for like an hour and a half. Oh no way, dude! I swear to That's God. That's cool. Swear to God. I text yeah. him with a question. He shoots me his phone number. He's yeah. like, "Shoot me a call." And I did. Wow. I talked for an hour and a half. Yeah. I don't even fucking know the dude. But I mean, that's that's I, that's what the industry needs. Yeah. yeah you know, it's, absolutely. That's I don't know. Like you, let pride get in the way. It's like the humility of fishing because that's that's one thing. Like let's face the facts. Like, dude, I don't care how good you are. Like, you can go out and you can have a banger day where you kill. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll even say it. Like, I had a day where I killed 70 kokanee. Yeah. You know, we started fishing at 7, 4, or 7, probably 7, 15, I bet. Yeah. And at one thirty four in the afternoon, 70 kokanee. Yuck. That's stupid, okay? Yeah. <laughs> now, I could go and I could be like, oh, man, I'm the greatest and this and that. But guess what happens? Yeah. Dude, I don't you know. You get humble. Oh, God will humble you quickly <laughs> when it comes to that, my friend. Like, oh, yeah, so it's like, sure. I, I always try to, you know. And it's I, when I'm out there too, like I try to, I try to give what I can to people, mm. because without it, like 
dude, I don't, I don't want to see like a dad and and a kid out there. Yeah. And and I had this happen. This one guy, like he's like cruising past me. Yeah. And and he's like, "How you doing?" You know. And this was last year, and I mean, we were killing him. Mm. And and he's like, Could, "You you got any advice?" And I'm like, "Dude, first off, I this is where like." I might be over humble when it comes to it is yeah. because I'm like, dude, I'm nobody like, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm doing. Like, you know, because dude, he's got a kid in the boat, man. Like that's yeah. what, like I said, like the same thing. If I saw you out there and you were to roll up on me and ask me, yeah, you know, and, and you telling me that you only got two fish and I got 30. Yeah. I'm, dude, I'm going to help you out. Just don't hang out. 175 <laughs> feet behind me yeah no after kidding. that the rest of the day yeah. you know but but it's it's like man just help them out yeah. like that's that's what it's about yeah that's and and that's what like keith helping you like with whatever question it's like that's what we need in this industry it's like nobody's asking for your secrets yeah yeah just just a little a little help like if you can give somebody something that'll make their catch rate go up 50 yeah. percent because they didn't know what they were doing yeah Versus going out and being blind and I don't know, man, everybody's different. You know, you get, you get one dad that's a short fuse that he goes out and he's having a crappy time, takes out on the kid. You think that kid's going to fish again? No, probably not. No, no, absolutely not. No. You know, it's like the whole, it's like the whole, you know, kid holding a flashlight for the dad. Yeah. Getting yelled at. Oh, been there. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah. like, you know, even, even Bill Rebus, Bill Rebus is the same way. You know, Bill and I have had many, many conversations about, mm -hmm. you know, just shrimp, just yeah. shrimp in general. And, um, I've always told him, I'm like, dude, I don't expect your secrets, but just yeah. a point in the right direction goes yeah. so far. And yeah. that's the one piece of advice that I wish I would have taken from him mm -hmm. last year that I didn't stupidly. <laughs> I overcomplicated it. Yeah. He told me simplify, simplify, yeah. simplify. And I didn't. Yep. And I suffered for it. I have, t I have probably 10 jars of coon shrimp in my fridge from last year oh. that I won't even touch. The, the lids are rusted shut. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, you know, that, that's exactly what I did this year is I simplify it. And I've already doing um, winter steelhead. I've already caught more fish on my coon shrimp this year than I did for no four months last year. Yeah. So that, dude, that should tell you everything you need to know. It right tells there. me 100%. It yeah. just tells me I should listen to Bill Revis. <laughs> <laughs> he might but, know what he's talking about. Yeah. yeah. But that's another thing I like about this Keith Archer stuff is yeah. it's simple, simplified. You yeah. Know? And, and there's like even, um, um, Zilla, like mm -hmm. they came out with like that mag blend, yeah. you know, and they took away, you know, the having to add all this stuff mm -hmm. to where now it's like, dude, it's, it's set it, forget it. Like, dude, it's done. Yeah. It's already like, I don't need to measure out anything after that. Yeah. You can, if you want, I'm not telling you not to, Yeah, but like there's, as far as like a simple coon shrimp recipe goes, yeah, I like, because I mean, the only one you could find for a while would be like Potskis. That's all you could find. Yeah, you know, like online, you're like looking, searching, like, oh, what's the secret? But dude, there's not. And there, there's some dudes that love that Potsky stuff. Yeah, I've never been about it. I tried it, but I don't know. Teach oh. their own. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's a well, and I mean, there's there's a brand that shall remain nameless that <laughs> that that I mean, I've I've used their products and nothing yeah never touched a fish yeah and i'm like i don't i don't get it you know and everybody around you they're they're using the same thing they're yeah. catching them but it's like you know so for me it's like well, i won't use that one again you yeah. know but it's you know it works because they're selling stuff but you know but yeah absolutely it's it's a confidence thing man it really is confidence and then and then i think anything with bait it's fresh yeah. you have to have fresh bait yeah yeah good fresh like what's your what so do you do you care much of your own shrimp or do you kind of buy stuff? um i like to go fully armed fully I, armed. I like to yeah. have too many options yeah that's exactly where i'm at dude um which is which is a good thing and a bad thing but i mean it's i have my i have like my go-to mm -hmm. um that i'll always have with me mm -hmm. um but then then it's like i have some experimental stuff um that'll that'll give it a shot and that's again that's the beauty about like being able to guide and, yeah. or, you know, you realize how hard it is to let you like, haven't you, you have the boat, you have all the gear. You think your damn buddies would be like, yeah, dude, I'll go. Yeah. It's like, man, dude, it's I, tough. I'm like, it is tough. Dude, I'm trying to get people to go walleye fishing tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, Oh no, I can't go. I'm like, what do you mean? You can't go dude. Like I've, 
I've never done it, but yeah. I'm gonna go give it a shot. Yeah, but, yeah. Why not? Yeah. You know. But it's it's it, that's what's nice though is once you get everybody out there and you can and you can test. Yeah. You know, and you yeah. can figure you got six out six rods to fuck with. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I mean, you get you know one time. I mean, that might be a one off. Yeah. Two times getting bit, you might want to pay attention. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Three, you're on to something. Three's a pattern. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing. I I fished with Brando. I started fishing with Brandon Powers like yeah. five years ago. That dude's and that's so much fun. That's like the first thing he told me. He's like, I went fishing with him, and he was like, one. What do you say? One's a fluke. Two's a fluke. Three's a pattern. Yeah. But and that stuck with me. Yeah. You know? Um, but anyways, yeah, we had talked a little bit about some, uh, you said freshness. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I'm kind of like torn on is like with coon shrimp specifically, I've heard guys say that they'll cure their coon shrimp. They mm -hmm. won't touch them for six months. And then I've also talked to guys that are like, I'll cure them and yeah. it'll sit for two weeks yeah. and then I'm fishing them. It's like, which well, is it? You know? Well, I guess, <laughs> so I guess when I say fresh, um, for me, fresh is like, getting a real good coon shrimp like okay. quality coon yeah, shrimp yeah. as far as that goes um because i have stuff that's from 2022 yeah that i'm so excited to fish this year yeah so it's like i'm not i'm i guess i'm not saying that that like the old bait won't work <laughs> again <laughs> i mean if you listen to anything keith archer said like he's got stuff that's older than that that he's still rolling with so it's yeah you know it's I think it's just it all starts with a good quality fresh mm -hmm. like coon shrimp not one that's like just been sitting around tossed around in a freezer for you know a year or two on end and, yeah and hell i mean that that i don't know if that'll work maybe <laughs> i mean they're they're fish and i think that's the problem is us as fishermen we overcomplicate shit yeah and it's it yeah. it's Sometimes we, I mean, look at your coon shrimp recipe, right? Dude, it was bad. Yeah. It was so bad. <laughs> yeah. So if we simplify it, just, I mean, start with fresh and fresh ingredients too. Like, yeah. Um, I, I, I was always, and I don't know if it was like the way that I was raised, but like my parents liked always to hang on to stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm like, oh, well, I got this and I don't know if I'm going to use it. Yeah, you know? but I'm so, going to hang on to it anyway. Yeah, dude, you got a procure bottle from like 12 years ago. You're like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Am I still working? You know, it's like, dude, go spend the 10 bucks and just yeah. go get something new. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. But, but you it, know, like sim simplifying, like I started using that Northwest Bait and Scent, the Super Herring Brine mm -hmm. last year. Yeah absolutely fell in love with it love it you know i absolutely love it i yeah. i tried doing my own herring brine mm -hmm. granted love of over complicating shit <laughs> i started using that super herring brine literally i take a half a cup dump it in i add a little blue to it because i like blue okay and that's it i add my water and my herring and it's done wow you know that's it that's it you know but right. I, i've also then it you can't get much more simple than dumping it out of a bottle i don't like right. the bottle chip i i don't right. i've had mixed results with it yeah. Um, do you do anything really kind of crazy with your herring or are you just kind of, for me, like, I mean, I won't even lie to you. Like do this. I've even God, years and years and years ago, like I went on a couple guided trips and you know, it was just blanks, Yeah. you know, and then I've gone out a few times and it's like, it's, it's a blank for me. Yeah. Um, I get, I'm, I'm, and, and Brandon would make fun of me for it, but that's fine. Like, I don't care, you know, good for him. He's a, he's a great fisherman. Um, but he's like, there's something about conquering that and, and you know, figuring it out. But yeah. it's, dude, I, I'm, I, I want to go catch fish. Yeah. yeah. Like, dude, it's, it's, I'm maybe that's, that's the full guy, you know, the full time guide thing is it's like, that's dude, that is a pride thing. And you should be, you should be oh, proud absolutely. of it. If you can, and, and there's some guys that are consistent and I've seen it year after year, after year, after year, mm -hmm. like these guys are whacking them. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm just, nope, nope. I'm just, I'm going to wait for these fish to get over. <laughs> Cause I mean, I, I like last year, like I brined up, you know, some, some herring and all that. And I went out and I was like, yes, I'm going to do it. And yeah. Yeah. Dude, just... Troll, trolling herring for, for early spring Chinook is an art. Okay. Oh, for sure. It's an art. For sure. And there's a lot of artists out here and I'm no artist, you know, no, no. I, I, I do okay some days and I do dog shit other days, yeah. but the, the guys that can go out and consistently yep. get fish trolling herring, 
I need to know. I need. <laughs> yeah. I need to know. You know. Yeah. That's that's. I, I actually. I'm. I'm trying to make it a goal. I'm trying to figure out somebody that's a really good bait fisherman that would be willing to jump on the podcast because I want to have an entire yeah. podcast. I'm sure you could fill a 45 minute window, Easy. an hour window, talking just herring. Yeah. And I, I. I need to figure out who it is, and I need to make sure they're willing to jump on my fucking <laughs> show. <laughs> right, you know, right. because that's something I want for selfishly for myself. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. If I got zero views on that episode. <laughs> I would be happy. You're not even going to produce it. Just <laughs> no, let it go. No, I'm just going to toss it. I'm going to leave it on the laptop. <laughs> but, That's fair. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. No, I just, I, I, like I said, so it's like that, I kind of jaded that way. It's just like bad experiences, you know. It's to where I'm like, you know, I'll just, I'll stay with, you know, you know, you can you can go home with a bag of nothing or I can go kokanee fishing and go home with a bag of fish. That's right. That's right. You know, and, and to me, like, ah. I don't know what would go. I mean, it's it definitely spring Chinook first and then Kokanee and then everything else kind of falls in place. Yeah. Um, but it's like to know that I can go up there and, and it, I can be consistent and even on a bad day still yeah. do pretty darn relatively well. well. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just to be able to have that in my back pocket, like I'd, I'm just, I'd rather go catch fish, Yeah. you know? So it's like I said, it's, it's, for me and like maybe maybe it is a pride thing for for some people and, and yeah. they want to they want to go conquer the unicorn that's a know? pride thing for me you know yeah. it's a, it, I, I got i got my buddy bailey and he is a hundred times the fisherman that i am you know and i'll yeah. openly say it but i, I have this stupid little mental competition <laughs> with him <laughs> right, you know okay. and like he, he'll text me every day killed three i'm like jesus fuck i got one you know yeah and uh yeah, it's it's definitely a pride thing, you know. Yeah. Even even Brandon Powers, you know, he's running six rods, I'm running two. I'm yeah. always trying to trying to keep up with him. Yeah, you know, but he's a fishy dude. He's a fishy dude. Yeah, and it pisses me off. Yeah. you know, I want the best for him. I want him to get his fish. Oh, I want to get sure. mine first. Yeah, you know, yeah. just leave one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just once. You yeah. know, it, if I can listen close, Bailey. Yeah. I want to get my fish once. <laughs> yeah, but, so, yeah, I, I I get that, dude. There's there's times where it's like you just want to. You yeah. should be like, yeah, see, I, I can do it yeah. once, yeah. and that's all I need, dude. I quit. I retire. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. I'm going to sell my boat, and I'm going to sell my rods, yeah. and I'm going to live comfortably. What, what? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> God, dude. Yeah, I'm going to have some sanity for the yeah. rest of my life. But yeah. So, I mean, that's that's pretty, like, for me, like, I'm just going to do, I'll probably just do kokanee then till. yeah, probably, I think my last weekend will be, like, mid-April, like, consistently. Yeah. And then... uh I might take a week for turkey hunting and go chase some birds for a little bit. Yeah. I got private land that I get to hunt on, so yeah, there you it go. It makes it over east or somewhere. It's over in Klickitat, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I've been hauling some logs out of there. There's oh, birds. Really? There's birds around. Yeah, they're they're around. That's for sure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where at in Klickitat. You sound but like a, you sound like a rifle hunter. Like my stepdad. <laughs> there's turkeys everywhere. And then I took him the one year, and he's yeah. like, "Bro, oh, where'd they go?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I've been turkey hunting once in my entire life, and it was cheating. Um, my, 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 uh, my best friend, Zach, he, uh, his, uh, his uncle had a piece of property down in Roseburg mm -hmm. and oh, God, they would, dude, yeah, they would said there. I mean, they would literally walk up to the house yep. and somehow with turkeys walking up to the house, I was down there for three days. I didn't kill shit. No so way. It was fucking horrible dude <laughs> you're like this is why i'll never go back yeah that's yeah, why exactly. i don't like lower river springer fishing <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. i relate i relate to it <laughs> yeah. i relate to it oh man well shit we went on a bit of a rant there yeah yeah i don't know yeah pretty pretty much kind of went all over the place i love it like you said it's kind of a you know, bs session so yeah. we'll just let her roll yeah. yeah yeah absolutely well uh shit i don't even know how to recap that that was that was fun yeah, I mean, we covered kokanee. We did yeah, a little yeah. bit of fall chinook. We did. Yeah, we talked about some guides and yeah. you know, part-time guides are assholes. And... Yeah, yeah, we, we really are. Yeah, yeah. talked up addicted. We yeah. talked about Brandon Powers and Bill Rivas and yeah, shit. Yeah, we got over a lot of stuff. It was a fun one, man. I Dude, had a it good was. time. I've had a great time, man. Yeah. I've had a great time. Like yeah. my palms are like sweaty or something. <laughs> but, yeah. um, real quick before we get off here, I oh, totally forgot at the beginning. Um, Logan Tucker with wreck -It Fabrication was super, super gracious and um, made me this sign for free. And he said, I want you to plug this on your podcast. And he did some work on my boat. It speaks for ourselves too. Oh, okay. Super, super cool, dude. Um, you need any kind of fabrication done on your boat. You need seat boxes, pedestal seats. Is he um, your local? He's uh he's over in St. Helens, Oregon. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, he's a little he's Columbia City, but okay. same shit. Yeah. Um super stand up dude. He's kind of getting up and rolling and 
I will keep taking my boat to him. Oh, what was his name? Logan Tucker. Logan Tucker. I, yeah. I he think... had a 20 foot smoker craft pro sportsman. He sold a little bit ago. Does he do this part time? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He works, f- uh, GP wanna, I think. I need I somebody to make me out. like rod <laughs> lockers for my, my super V. He'd do it. Yeah. Yeah. He would absolutely do it. Yeah. I need, I need something to do with that. Cause like, I hate take like, dude, when we're springer fishing and I got to tear everything down. Yeah. And store it in my truck because I'm worried about somebody stealing it. Well, and you know, we live in fucking Longview. Like, I had shit stolen yeah. out of my boat a handful of years ago. Yeah. And now I have to unload my boat every single day. Oh, mine lives in a shop when it's home. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah. You're lucky. My boat doesn't fit in here. Yeah. No. But, yeah. No, it was a, it was a blast, man. Um, I had a great time having you on. Yeah, I Hopefully appreciate Hopefully we can it. do it again. Absolutely, man. And uh, We'll get together. I'll take you out kokanee fishing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll uh, get you learn. Learn, learn from you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. So, um, all righty, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in to episode 11 of the Wet Net Podcast. Um, you guys have yourselves a great weekend. Tight lines, go chase some springers and kokanee or <laughs> do something. Um, you guys have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.